Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Three in custody following latest Hopewell killing. The police have revealed that three men are now in custody following the shooting death of Corner Grizzly, an elderly construction worker, in the Crabwood Lane section of Hopewell, Hanover on Friday. Grizzly, a 62 year old resident from the Mount Pillar section of the parish, was working on a construction site. When armed men approached and shot him, he later died. Following a tour of Crab Wood Lane on Saturday, Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of Rear One Clifford Chambers provided an update to the media. There are two persons who have been arrested and charged and are in custody. We are hoping that we'll be able to keep them from being offered bail because of the nature and gravity of the continuity of investigation and leads which have been provided given other crimes they are involved in, he stated. There is another who is also in custody pending interrogation and further discussions as it relates to the potential of his involvement in the other crimes he also divulged. According to ACP, the space of murders in Hopewell could be attributed to recent gang activities that has its origin in illicit lottery scamming. We have two gangs, which I don't want to name, but as a result of the tension and the murders and the reprisal and counter-reprisal, you do have what is now spilling over into some murders on the ground, unfortunately, he stated. However, he insisted that the police have been on top of the latest incidents. With regards to this one, we are safely saying that the police are confident that the issues will be brought to an end soon, given the persons who are in custody and known perpetrators who are involved in these gangs, he assured. Chambers also used the opportunity to provide details on the deceased explaining that he too was part of a criminal network based on what the police intelligence has shown them. The man here is no angel. A gun was taken from him, the cops said. There were rounds that were found in his pocket when the forensic crime did their crime scene investigation and is the father of one of the persons who is presently in custody, he stated. Two men killed in St. James gun attack. Two men were shot to death by a gunman at a shop in Greenwood St. James Saturday morning. The deceased have been identified as Marshall Hyatt, otherwise called Kosh 42, a shop operator from Greenwood, and a man known only as Little Man. It was reported that around 1 a.m., Marcel and Little Man were closing the shop when a man entered and ordered a drink. While Little Man was serving the customer the drink, he reportedly pulled a firearm. Police said the man opened gunfire hitting Marshall in his upper body, right arm and left feet. Little Man was shot in his head and upper body, both men died on the spot. The customer police said made his escape in a waiting motor car. The scene was processed and 12 pence casings were found. The bodies were moved to the mark pending a post-mortem examination. This is the third double murder to Rock St. James this week. Police have not yet established a motive for the killing. Motorcyclist dies after crashing into wall utility pole. A saint and motorcyclist died as a result of injuries sustained after crashing into a wall and a utility pole. He is Dwayne White, a painter of Hagley Park Road. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that about 1.20 p.m., White was traveling along at East Avenue when he lost control of his bike and crashed. The police were called to the scene. He was assisted to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Woman who sent sleeping spouse on fire gets life sentence. Sarita Hudson Blair, the woman who dosed her spouse with gas and set him on fire resulting in his death, will have to serve a 18-year prison sentence for her crime. Hudson Blair was given the mandatory sentence of life in prison and ordered to serve 18 years before she is eligible for parole. The punishment is in line with a plea agreement her lawyer struck with prosecutors. The sentence was imposed by Justice Vaughn Simmitt in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston on Friday. Hudson Blair pleaded guilty to murder on February 9 for the gruesome death of her common-law partner, Kenton Brown, on May 27, 2017. Dressed in a black blouse and skirt, she sobbed in the prisoner's box as her attorney pleaded with Simit for leniency and murder. Among the evidence, prosecutors Andrea Martin Swaby and Chenik Farkas had lined up for Hudson Blair's murder trial, where a transcript of a deathbed interviewed, Brown gave a police constable in which he detailed the late night attack. My uncle wake up to find myself in a fire with do woman stand up over me. He recounted to the constable hours after the May 23, 2017 attack inside the couple's St. Andrew home. The interview was cut short after Brown, father of two children aged 7 and 10, 
old or at the time, began shaking violently, the constable recounted. Officer, take care of me to pick in them, because them not have nobody, said the cop, recounting Brown's last words to him. Brown succumbed to his injuries four days later. Mount Salem murders linked to remnants of gangs, says Chang. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang has revealed that recent shootings in the Mount Salem community, which have left three dead and two injured, can be linked to individuals who were once involved in gang activities. According to the minister, while the big gangs have been contained individuals or the ones who have recently been wrecking havoc. Chang was speaking with the media Saturday after touring Crawford Street and the main road in Main Salem with members of the security forces. In the Mount Salem era, we don't even have an identifiable big gang. It's more community-based and family-related. Everybody knows everybody, but the increased activity in scamming has generated a lot of financing, and of course, there are still guns available, and people are willing to use them, the minister explained. There are still young men who are a part of that gang who are still off the face of it, and this is where we continue quest for violence continued. The flare up in the crime has occurred despite the community being declared a zone of special operation Zozo, a tool employed since 2017. The Zozo, which was to have been too prolonged approach to fixing the problem with the community of criminals while providing social support for residents. Chang believes the initiative is still on track. We have had less than 10 murders over the severe period, and this is the first one in about eight months. What it reflects is the original concept is still there that they will bring PC asserted. This view was also shared by Assistant Commissioner of Police for Air 1 Clifford Chambers, who was on the tour. From a policing standpoint, it is clear that the zone of special operations is working. When you look at the statistical figure of murders, shootings and major crimes, it is clear that it is working, Chambers insisted. Gunmen kills vendor at stall in Linstead Market. Vendors and shoppers at the Linstead Market in St. Catherine were sent scampering for a cover Saturday night after a gunman opened fire on a female Higlaw. At the end of the shooting, 55-year-old Marcia Smith was found dead. Smith is a resident of Treadways District in the parish and she operated a stall in the market. It was reported that around 7.30 p.m., Smith was at her stall when she was approached by a man from behind. Police said the man pulled a gun and fired one shot at her, hitting the vendor in the back of her head, killing her on the spot. The man then fled during the ensuing miller. Simit, police said, was taken to hospital where she was pronounced dead. No motive has been established for the attack, the police stated. Bodies of two men found in Kingston Gully Two men were shot dead along Adela Street in Kingston Saturday night. The bodies of the men, who are still unidentified, were found in a gully along the roadway. It was reported that around 10.20 p.m., Residents reported a hearing explosion sounding like gunshots and summoned the police. On their arrival, a 2014 white Nissan Silver motor car was seen, parked along Mitchell Street with two 9mm spent casing and what appeared to be blood on the road close to the vehicle. Police followed a blood trail running from the car onto the street where the bodies of the men were seen lying in a nearby gully. The scene was processed by the police on the morning and the bodies taken to hospital where they were confirmed dead. They were then removed to the morgue. Two shot in Manchester bar attack. A man and a woman were shot and injured in an attack at a bar in New Green community of Manchester on Saturday night. According to police reports at approximately 8.45 p.m., the victims were among patrons at the business establishment in New Green Square when they were pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened fire hitting them before escaping. The woman is said to have sustained gunshot wounds to the head. The era has seen a flare-up in violence in recent months. On March 3rd, cook shop operator Catherine Matthews, 39, was shot dead and her husband injured as the two walked home from their shop in the night. Cops probe Canadian woman surprised death in Clarendon. Police have launched a probe into the mysterious death of a woman visiting the island from Canada. The deceased has been identified as Jada Parlin Whitehead a 28-year-old school board employee from Toronto, Ontario. She died at Cherry's Height in Portland Cottage, Clarendon, on Saturday. Reports are that Whitehead arrived on the island about two weeks ago to visit and spend time with her common-law husband, a fisherman from Cherry's Height. Police said that sometime late Friday, the two reported had a dispute which got physical. 
It is alleged that a fan was thrown at the Canadian and her head slammed into a wall. Whitehead reported left the home and went to stay at her friend's house in the same community. While there, her friends advised her to visit the hospital. However, Whitehead expressed that she did not wish to go and refused to report the incident to the police. Police said that while at the house on Saturday, Whitehead went to sleep sometime after 3 p.m. Her friends observed that her head was swollen and tried to convince her to visit the doctor, but she refused. Further reports indicate that around 5.30 p.m., the friends returned home and discovered Whitehead lying in the same position. They left her. They realized she wasn't moving and reported the matter to the Lionel Town police station. The police responded and saw Whitehead's lifeless body face down on a bed. She was clad in a white t-shirt and blue jeans pants. Swelling was observed on the face and neck and she had what appeared to be a blood stain on her hand. The body was transported to the Lionel Town Hospital where it was confirmed dead. Whitehead's common-law husband has since been taken into custody pending investigations. J.N. A.B.M. vandalized in Santa Cruz Police have confirmed that a Jamaica National automated banking machine A.B.M. in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, was vandalized on Saturday night. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police Superintendent Kenneth Chin told reporters that an investigation was ongoing to determine if any cash was stolen. There was an incident, but it is too early to see if any money was stolen, but it seems intact so far, he said. On Thursday, Superintendent Chin told councillors at the multi sitting of the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation of arrest made following several robberies. He said a suspect in a supermarket robbery in Santa Cruz, who turned up at a hospital after reportedly accidentally shooting himself in his foot, is being investigated for his alleged involvement in an attempted robbery and attack and a burial of money courier in Bogil near Balaclava. He gave a statement in which he said he was involved, but he is not committing that to a caution statement. Although he said he was involved, we don't have any proof that he was involved other than his word, which he has not committed to in writing, Jin explained. Parliamentarians get big pay raise. Cabinet ministers have received a 230% increase in salary up to April 1, 2024 with their pay moving from $6.9 million in 2021 to $22.9 million next year. As at April 1, 2023, cabinet ministers will take home an annual salary of $20.2 million. The Prime Minister's salary jumps by 214%, with his pay moving from $9.1 million in 2021 to $28.6 million on April 1, 2024. Effective April 1, 2023, the head of government will get $25.3 million annually. The increases form part of the new rates under the public sector compensation system announced by Finance and Public Service Minister Dr. Nigel Clark in Parliament on Tuesday afternoon. Clark told parliamentarian colleagues that the government has not changed the framework used to calculate pay for the political directorate over the last three decades. The Deputy Prime Minister's salary has surged by 221% moving from a little over $8 million in 2021 to $25.7 million effective April 1, 2024. As at April 1, 2023, the Deputy Prime Minister is being paid $22.7 million per year. The Leader of the Opposition has received a similar increase to that of the Deputy Prime Minister. For the Finance Minister, his salary has moved up by 232% from $7.4 million in 2021 to $24.6 million as at April 1, 2024. The Finance Minister is now receiving $21.7 million effective April 1, 2023. Teenager charged for a deadly Spanish Town Road bus attack. A 17 year old boy has been charged with the murder of a street vendor and the injury of six other people following a gun attack on the bus along Spanish Town Road, Kingston, on April 21. 40 year old Marcia Saunders of Friendly Avenue Central Village in St. Catherine was killed during the incident. The teenager has been charged with murder, six counts of wounding with intent, shooting with intent, being in possession of a prohibited weapon, being in possession of prohibited ammunition, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. The Hunts Bay Police say about 3 p.m., the teen and other man, armed with handguns, board a bus along Spanish Stone Road and opened gunfire, hitting Saunders and six other persons. The teen was subsequently arrested in April, and charged on Monday after he was pointed out during an identification parade.
SOE declared in St. James, Hanover, and Clarendon. A 14-day state of public emergency has been imposed by the government in St. James, Hanover, and Clarendon. The security measure is in response to the surge in criminal activities. Making the announcement in a statement yesterday morning, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the move is to safeguard the lives of innocent citizens. The Clarendon Police Division has witnessed a significant increase in murders and shooting incidents, with a 67 increase in murders and 41% increase in shooting incidents as at May 14, 2023, compared to the same period last year. This necessitates the declaration of the state of public emergency, said Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson. Although experiencing a decline in murders by 27%, St. James still had the highest number of murders across all police divisions, with a total of 69 recorded. The division also had the four highest number of shooting incidents, with 34 incidents during the same period last year, Anderson added. For Hanover, the police commissioner said that the division has witnessed the highest increase in murders, with a 75% raises as of May 14, 2023, compared to the same period in 2022. In the meantime, Dr. Horace Chung, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, urged citizens to see to enhance security measures as an opportunity to join the fight against criminality. We call upon every citizen, not just those living in the affected areas, to support these security measures. By standing united, we will win the war on guns, gunmen and gangs. This was echoed by wholeness. We must come together as a nation to fight against criminality. I urge every citizen to share information and fully cooperate with the security forces. Together, we can make Jamaica a safer space. Please remember to subscribe, like, share,